Welcome up, Sophia Shao. And um, well, I have a picture of Sophia, but we also have Sophia here. So I think I'll introduce her, and you can, instead of looking at her picture, you can look at her. Um, Sophia is an assistant professor and an SK Hynix faculty fellow in EECS. Previously, before joining Berkeley, she was a senior research scientist at NVIDIA Research. She received her PhD in 2016 and SM degree in 2014 from Harvard University. Her research interests are in the area of computer architecture with a special focus on specialized accelerators, heterogeneous architecture, and agile VLSI design methodology. Her work has been awarded the Best Paper Award at DAC 2021, Best Paper Award at JSSC 2020, and a Best Paper Award at Micro 2019. Top Picks in Computer Architecture 2014 and Honorable Mentions um, in 2019. She got two of those. Uh, she's a 2022 IEEE TCCA Young Computer Architect Award and um, her PhD dissertation at Harvard was nominated um, by the, for the best um, PhD dissertation across the university. So welcome and thank you, Sophia. Okay, well thank you. Well, thanks Claire for the very nice introduction. Everyone, great to see you here, and it's great to celebrate the 50 amazing years of the EECS department at UC Berkeley. So as Claire mentioned, I'm Sophia Shaw. I'm a faculty member here at UC Berkeley. My research area is also in computer architecture with a special focus on really thinking about domain-specific system. So Kirste has mentioned a lot of really exciting development of the RISC V movement and how it has really changed the way we're interacting with computing devices. So now I'm going to talk about what's in the future, how we really leverage this open, hard, open source hardware foundation to build future generation computing system, especially when we think about domain specific computing. It is really an exciting time to think about the computing industry. The demand is really strong across all the different market segments. Machine learning is really transformative in the way we, we actually interact with everyone, with our devices, with our applications, and also with the society as a whole. And this is not only in machine learning, all the different industries, all the different applications are requiring more computational power, more computational throughput to meet the growing demand which basically means for our industry, you will have a good design, you will have good idea, you will have a good hardware solutions, there will always be customers. So that's the good news. At the same time, the tricks that we have been relying on in our industry, in particular the semiconductor industry, is not there anymore, right? So we have been really relying on, especially from the fabrication side, the transistors are, not, are going to get better, cheaper, more performance generation over generation. But things are not in that way. The transistors are not getting cheaper, it's actually more expensive, and they're not getting more performant, especially when we look at, at energy. So it is a really exciting time when we think about today's computing industry. On the one hand, you're right, it is so exciting, so many driving applications, such a huge demand at the same time, right? What are our solutions? How we actually meet those growing demands? Well, whenever there's crisis, there's also opportunities, right? When we think about there are all the different applications that require acceleration, require more computational power, then we really need to think about how we actually architect the future generation of computing system to meet those demands. One of the most promising approaches that we are exploring these days is to build domain-specific system. So what do I mean by domain-specific system? Those are basically customized hardware that are designed to a particular domain of applications. So Kirsty already mentioned, right, today's hardware is fairly heterogeneous. We have a range of different building blocks. You would take Apple's M1 processor as an example, right? There are CPUs, GPUs, and also a range of different hardware specialized units to accelerate different applications. 
one of the good examples of thinking about domain-specific specialization is really thinking about the neural engine or tensor processing unit or deep learning accelerator, all the different, uh, different terminology we'll associate. They are basically customized hardware that are designed to make sure our machine learning applications run faster. Those are just one of the examples of all the different specialized engines that we are adding into our system. So here, many of you are familiar with the Berkeley uh, five-year lab model, right? Really thinking about, especially from the system side, how we really address the growing challenge to actually be build better computing platform. So our current mission, our current five-year lab is called Slice Lab, is really thinking about how we can better provide these specialized solutions, not only just uh, individual accelerators, not only thinking about a particular application, but as Christy mentioned, the entire ecosystem ecosystem, how we build a specialized ecosystem to meet all the different demands. Right? Many of you are pretty, pretty familiar. We also mentioned earlier that early days of Parlab, right? really thinking about how we build, uh, address parallelism with a multi-core shift. Multi -core shift right? And uh, so then followed by Aspire Lab, start thinking about specialization that really started the entire risc five movement because we need more open source uh, IPs. After that, we, uh, folks here also developed a depth lab, right? really thinking about methodology. We need to design all the different IPs, how we can have better methodologies so that we can actually build it faster. Now, as we're entering this golden age of computer architecture, our emphasis, our mission, is really thinking about with all the different driving applications, how we can develop this specialized ecosystem to meet all the different demands for all the different applications so that the different applications computing different devices all benefit from specialization. So with that, a lot of our research is really focusing on thinking about this full stack optimization for future domain-specific system. Of course, it is very important to develop domain-specific accelerators, right? How we can really take advantage of the application behavior, developing custom circuit to make sure accelerators run faster. At the same time, we are also very interested in really thinking about the integration of the accelerators. Today's system are very heterogeneous. We have different components, CPUs, GPU, different flavor, flavor of course. How we can make sure that they can coexist and also build more efficient computing platforms. And finally, all our systems need to be used by the end programmers, by the users, right? How we can actually facilitate, improve the programmability so that all the different programmers with different program experiences can really take advantage of this additional power from specialization. So that actually drives a lot of the mission that what we're doing in thinking about building specialized ecosystems. In today's talk, I'm going to briefly just most focusing on the bottom two, really thinking from the system perspective, how we can facilitate uh, the integration of accelerators so that we can capture the system level effect and uh, how we think about uh, the programming of accelerators. So when we think about accelerator system, accelerator integration, right? of course accelerators are great, but they don't exist in isolation. When we think about today's platform, they're very heterogeneous. We have a range of different cores, different processing components to accelerate different applications. And if we look at the past decades, the different evolution of generation of SOCs, the trend just continue. We're adding more and more specialized components so that we're getting better performance. But when we think about the way we actually use all the different specialized components, they are actually very different from the way we think about general purpose computing, right? Right. The traditional computer architecture is really focusing on, okay, how can we develop a better cores or maybe also better GPUs. But if you look at today's SOC, they are very heterogeneous. There are so many different components. They actually coexist. They also need to collaborate. They talk to each other. They figure out where each other is working on and try to actually uh, work on the different applications collaboratively. So that requires a lot of collaboration, a lot of communication, which is very important in the way we think about more than SOC. Today's system on your phone, there are already so many different IP blocks coexist. And when we just, for example, record a like 4K video, there are a lot of components, a lot of data communications. All of those need to be actually carefully captured and uh, manipulated to actually get better performance. 
So I think we talk about system level, right? Accelerator is only one component. When you think about system, there are so many different components there. So what kind of full system visibility that we are really interested when we look at today's SOC? So we mentioned it's very heterogeneous. We have different flavor cores, different accelerators, and all of them have some like shared resources, shared bus, shared memory system, shared interconnect, right? So we think about the full system, how they actually coexist and also work collaboratively for different tasks. Well, first, there's this memory hierarchy, right? We have different building blocks. There are different memory components that actually spread around across different IPs, and then we also have shared memory. Whenever there's shared resources, there are a lot of special attention needs to be paid onto how we, how we actually support, uh, how we actually manipulate contentions, how we actually reduce interference, how we even actually guarantee correctness so that they can actually talk to each other, communicate to each other. All of those are very important when we think about architecting future generation computing system. Oh, this is memory hierarchy, right? We talk about programmability, right? How we can handle, actually support the virtual memory system. How we can make sure that accelerators can actually easily use and uh, potentially even leverage some of the virtual memory support that we have in our general purpose computing system to develop the improved programmability. And CPU is still very important. It is a central engine, right, for, to, our, to manipulate different components on our heterogeneous devices. And for things that we cannot be accelerate, we still need to actually offload them onto the CPU, onto the processor to actually execute them for our application. So all of those are very important. So when you think about acceleration, especially with the growing importance of thinking about deep learning, uh, one of our ma uh, major efforts is really setting up this uh, open source full system, full SOC design platform to design future generation machine learning accelerators. So that's our Gemini project that is RISC-V compatible. We can actually act as at, uh, at RISC-V compatible accelerators as part of SOC. We develop the entire stack, not only just the hardware, but also the programming stack to make sure the users can actually interact with accelerators directly. We also have different uh, SOC components to make sure when we think about accelerator performance, it's not only looking at the individual kernels, but also looking at the end-to-end -end, uh, system. So the entire project is completely open source. We have a lot of users from both academia and industry really using Gemini to actually build their SOC platform, and they can also add their secret sauce in if they're interested in different flavor of machine learning applications, but they also have this very compatible uh, with risc ecosystem to accelerate different machine learning applications. Due to the time constraints, I will only briefly uh, look at some of the things that you can do with an open system like that when you're actually architecting future generation of SOCs. Like when we think, we talk about the heterogeneous SOC, there are also all the different building uh, memory blocks, right, spreading across different components. It could be inside each, each individual IPs or each individual accelerators, or there could be some shared components that actually all the accelerators have access to. A very common question the designers always run into is that if we have some actual area budget, right? How do we actually architect my system? How do I actually partition my memory budget? Whether I put it into the individual IPs or I put it into the, my shared memory to actually improve the overall uh, performance. System like Gemini can help the designers to answer questions like that because we capture not only individual if accelerator effect but also the entire uh, entire SOC system on chip. So, for example, what you, we see here is like the partition the decisions is very application dependent. With different applications, you may actually want to uh, locate your SRAM differently because some applications can benefit more from having a little bit more on chip local SRAM, but some application may, may benefit more from having some large shared memory. It is also very SOC configuration dependent. Depends on how big your system is, how many different components you have in your system. You may also partition your system differently because there are a lot of system level dependencies into the arbitration process. So that's really the way we really think about uh, the integration of Accelerator, not only just the individual IP, but also thinking about how it can fit together with the entire eco, a specialized ecosystem. 
So we talk about integration accelerator. Next, I'm going to briefly talk about some of our work in really thinking about how do accelerators really interact with programmers. Eventually, it, it accelerate applications, but to actually get benefit, to make sure they are useful, we also need to sure, make sure that they can be used effectively by different use cases. So here I'm going to talk about two different examples how we actually use accelerators. One is a more static case, how we can figure out a good programming a good way of scheduling applications onto Accelerator. Another one is actually more dynamic when there are like a lot of different things going on. How can we figure out a more dynamic manipulation and programming of Accelerator? So when we think about uh, Accelerator, when we're actually mapping application, although they are custom, they're designed for specialized different degree, different flavor applications, there still exists a fairly complex mapping or compilation space when we map computations onto the accelerators. There are so many different ways we can map, like in this example, a deep learning network uh, onto the accelerators to exploit different levels of parallelism, locality that exists in our system. More specifically, we'll look at what we mean by the mapping space, right? When we think about deep learning networks, a lot, many of them have these patterns of nested loops, right? The question is really how we map the different layers of loop, either temporally or spatially, onto our computing uh, substrate. One of our work in this space is really thinking about how can we actually do this in a timely manner, right? It is very important to, of course, get a good schedule, but it is also very important to get a good schedule very quickly, right? So that we can actually quickly deploy it, and this will be even more important when we think about the hardware that haven't been built because it takes a lot of effort to actually run the simulation. So collaborating with uh, Professor Jim Demo, who has done a lot of really interesting work for communication avoidance uh, in application uh, programming, we developed this COSA infrastructure, really leveraging this constraint optimization to quickly figure out a very effective schedule that can be mapped onto a special, uh, special, uh, specialized accelerators. Here, we're really leveraging a lot of regularities in our application. Both the application is pretty regular. We look at today's deep neural network, and also the hardware is also very regular because we want to get the parallelism, right? So leveraging the regularity, there are a lot of interesting opportunities that we can improve the overall uh, efficiency. I'm not going to go through the results, uh, to spend too much on the results, but we basically get a much better performance, but also a much faster time to solution because getting a very quick, timely answer is also uh, very important. So COSA is really focusing on static schedule. We're still talking about offline. We have a fixed application. We have a fixed hardware, right? How we actually map this application onto the hardware. What we're really interested in after the COSA work is that we talk about today's SOC is very heterogeneous, right? There are so many different components. Static solution may work for a very isolated environment, but what will be even more interesting and also important is how it can be more adaptive given today's system is fairly complex and also very dynamic. What do I mean by today's system are more complex and dynamic? There are so many different applications that are running concurrently on our system. This happens both at the edge, you take self-driving car as an example. There are so many tasks that are very mission critical and all of them need to be running concurrently at the same time on our hardware. This also applies to the cloud environment. We have different clients, different clients have different applications, but they are actually sharing our cloud servers. So when we think about concurrency, when we think about all the multiple things that need to actually run concurrently in our hardware, one thing we really need to be, care of, be careful about is how we actually handle interference, right? Think about today's SOC we mentioned, it's very heterogeneous. There are like 40 plus different accelerators coexist in today's SOC. Once they coexist, we need to actually run so many applications concurrently. We also talk about all the different shared memory in our system. There will be interference, right? There will be contention that eventually it will lead to a latency degradation. We're actually observing longer latencies because of different applications are interfering with each other. Right, so here, when we, when we approach this kind of scenario, this kind of problem, what we are really interested in is how can we develop a more dynamic mechanism through both hardware and software compilation infrastructure, co-design, so that applications can be more adaptive. So that's basically our uh, MOCA work, is really to support this kind of more adaptive resource partition. Not only just partition over time as a traditional multiplexing, but actually partition both the compute resources and 
also the memory, the shared resources, which is really the source of the contention and has a big implication on the end-to-end -end performance, right? So by doing this adaptive partition, we can actually give adaptively, dynamically, give more resources for the applications who actually need more uh, compute throughput or memory at that time, but then repartition the resources when the application behaviors changes, right? So that's our Mocha work, really thinking about improving the overall quality of service results across different applications running concurrently on today's complex heterogeneous uh, system. So that's the way we really think about, we talk about integration of accelerators and the exposing accelerators to the programming interface and how we can map different computations to hardware and the software. That's really just some of the starting point of our slice lab. Uh, I want to mention all the great, amazing students who actually, uh, who led this effort and our sponsors to support of our research. Those are really just samples of the projects that I mentioned earlier. Uh, I mentioned that we are starting our new lab, the Slice Lab, really thinking about specialized ecosystem. We have more exciting uh, projects going on, in really thinking about different applications, different substrate, different technology, and how we can co-design across the stack to get better performance and efficiency. We are hosting an open, uh, open house uh, this afternoon. I, if any of you are around, feel free to stop by our open house. Our students have prepared their posters to share some of really exciting development on the different components when we approach the specialization um, era. With that, just a quick recap. We are very interested in building future generation domain specific ecosystem, leveraging all the open source hardware effort, especially led by RIS-5. And we are interested not only in designing individual accelerators, but how we actually build more of them integrate them together and expose them to the end programmer so that the programmers can also use them effectively. It is a really exciting time for computing ar computer architecture to address many of the really important challenges in this industry. This is also uh, a great time being here at Berkeley at the X department to really approach this very complex, very sophisticated problem across the stack to figure out a full stack solution. So I'm very excited excited about the future of computing architect computer architecture. I'm also very excited about the future of this department. So this is a good time to think about all the amazing things that we have done and also look forward to more exciting things in the future. With that, I'll end my talk here and thank you very much for being here. Thank you so much, Sophia.